the order will be the war advantage. Press powers advantage and the deck is there. The war advantage, the press powers advantage, and the debt is set. China war and the only thing you know that puts a hard break on it is the affirmative. Everything else is aspirational and, and relies on relies on legal scholars, political opinions, etc. to be able to establish an artificial scenario. You should feel you should feel confident that the Chinese attempt to invade Taiwan is going to cause U.S. draw and likely to escalate in outweighs on magnitude because it's the only thing guaranteed to cause extinction. They don't have strong impact defense against our escalation claim, but just some internal weak defense that I'll deconstruct, but we have it against theirs, which means you should be super, super, super skeptical of the Man 14 thesis that was written six, uh, six, uh, six years before now, which means it doesn't really matter. Now, the line by line, they say Taiwan wants all deterrence measures. That doesn't mean they can. Only the affirmative can put a hard break on Taiwan's ability to develop offensive capabilities like new types of submarines, etc., which is our HEO evidence and our Lancosa evidence. Only the affirmative can force them into that position, even if they can increase their budget. Sam made a really good argument that they wouldn't have the capacity to pursue other measures, which means they wouldn't do it. It's not logical, and that was a conceded argument, which means the app does have the capacity to force them. They say that it would trigger gray zone scenarios. Obviously, answered above, we would be able to force them out of that, and they would develop asymmetric to the capabilities like UAVs, UAVs and mobile forces, etc. Their own defense said that says that it's easier to shoot down a ship with a missile is our argument. We force them to do that. The Heath evidence says geography. Taiwan is close, which means that that doesn't apply. Leaders, they're all nationalists in the context of Taiwan, which means that's an app argument. Motives, the one China policy proves China would invade, which is an app argument. And the economy, which does not apply. It established first in cross-ex that economic pressure towards Taiwan is something China has always done, which means they would pursue that. And the nationalistic motives outweigh in the context of Taiwan because it's a defensive war that they view it as a national interest, which means none of their defense actually applies to our scenario, and we have a stronger, larger impact that we're actually going for. Press powers. Um, saying that Congress doesn't want to push forward on sales does not assume durable fiat. We get to do the Taiwan portion of the plan, even if we don't spill over to other stuff, that's completely fine. We said that we refuse sales to Taiwan, which means Congress can do that. The only question is whether the executive doesn't comply. All of the stuff that was cross-applied from the counter plan was things like defense lobbies influence Trump. People are war hawks. Generally, those claims would disprove things like soft law, which are just FYIs that tell people to want to comply with things, but only the affirmative is a hard break that guarantees arms sales are actually reduced. Because of things like power of the purse, which was a 1AR argument, funding cutoffs to the executive would allow for them to follow through. Subpoenas and holding people in contempt. That is a congressional power that they can use to follow through on legislation. Also conceded. And third, appealing to court, etc. Those are all backstops that were literally not answered and are just assertions that ideology can overcome laws. That's not true. Only the affirmative solves it. Um, opaque noncompliance is legalese and literally has no quantitative example in the context of the app. Um, the DA. All right, I'm just going to start from the top down. They first begin by talking about regional conflicts. I'll explicitly extend the fat wise evidence from the 1NC. It says that absent defense cuts, et cetera, there were still relative peace in the absence of an America, a strong American economy and strong American influence. You should be skeptical of voting on all these regional loose nukes, terror, pro et cetera, impacts when they have said hedge is resilient because of geography, tech, culture. And the FetWise evidence to back it up, all of those are claims that take out their ability to access anything other than a diversionary war, which means that you should be super, super, super skeptical of terrorism being able to access those things. And if we're in a war with China, how are we going to be able to manage all of those foreign threats, which proves that case can clearly interact with and turn the dissent. Second, the Dresdner evidence says that even when the economy declines, nothing happened. 2008, where was the terrorism? You all are still here. What happened? Nothing. There is no reason why economic decline influences those things. The Turns case argument that says China, interdependence causing war. There's no evidence that says that even if China relies on interdependence or peace, that they would somehow go to war if it wasn't there. Taiwan is the only scenario for conflict that would escalate. They read the heat evidence, and it only we, we have made Taiwan-specific reasons why it only applies in that instance, which means they cannot turn the case. The authoritarian leaders argument. Mao and Trump are both authoritarian. LMAO, we're already there. Um, the time frame evidence, or the time frame argument. 
um, intervening actors and global impacts, that doesn't matter. Our Carpenter evidence describes the fact that there's a short-term proximate impact that is likely to occur and that it could happen within a few weeks, which means that magnitude and probability are the considerations that you should prioritize. China war is clearly larger than that. The tier evidence, it's wrong. Clary is newer, cites their study and 109 different dyads and says that things like Gorbachev and Nixon in the 1980s established that when the economy is shaky, you can pursue arms control rather than being escalatory. And none of their evidence says nuclear war. They would, Trump would clearly just strike a terror group and say, ha ha, I did it, look at me, I diverted. And that's not a reason why I would go nuclear, but we have evidence that establishes a nuclear threshold for the AFS impacts, which means you cannot think that this impact is more likely to escalate, and you have to vote affirmative because of the sheer magnitude.